In this video, we're going to talk about um, question number five from the 2011 Form B of the AP Calculus AB uh, examination from the free response section. So in this question, it says that Ben rides a unicycle back and forth along a straight east-west track. The twice differentiable function B models Ben's position on the track, measured in meters from the western end of the track at time t, which is measured in seconds from the start of the ride. And the table above gives values for B of t and Ben's velocity V of t measured in meters per second at selected times t. So part A says use the data in the table to approximate Ben's acceleration at time t equals 5 seconds. Indicate units of measure. So we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So typically in calculus to find the acceleration you take the derivative of the velocity function. Here though we just have a table of values so we can't really take a derivative. And so we just approximate using traditional algebra 1 type slope <coughs> using the data that we know. So we want um, the acceleration at time t equals 5. Well, we don't have any information about what's happening at time equals 5, but we do know what happens between 0 and 10. And since 5 is on that interval between 0 and 10, we look at the velocity between 0 and 10, and we look at how that changes, because that's what acceleration is. It's a rate of change of velocity. So for part A, all we need to do is use our regular old slope formula and say 2.3 minus 2.0 over 10 minus 0. Change in velocity over change in time. That's what acceleration is. And so that's going to give us 0.3 over 10, which is of course 0 0.03. And it says <coughs> to use or to indicate units of measure, my velocity is measured in meters per second, so this is meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. And that's all we have to do. That's all we can do for the acceleration here because we don't have, we only have four data points, so that's the best approximation we can get. All right, let's move on to part. In part B, it says using correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral from zero to sixty of the velocity function in the context of this problem. Then approximate that same integral using a left Riemann sum with subintervals indicated by the data in the table. So <clears throat> when we have a rate of change and then we integrate that rate of change, that tells us how much we've accumulated. So velocity is a rate of change of distance or position, and so the integral tells us what is the total change in distance or position. Um, and the reason that the absolute value is in there is to make this a total distance traveled as opposed to a um, just displacement. Displacement tells me how far I am from where I started. Uh, distance distance traveled tells you actually how far you've gone. So in this case, since Ben is going back and forth on the east-west track, um, there might be a difference between displacement, how far he is from where he started, and distance, how far he's actually ridden his unicycle. And so let's, uh, let's look at what we can say about that here. So first let's actually write down what we said there because it does say to interpret the meaning, so that's going to be part of the answer here. So we'll say that this integral from 0 to 60, the absolute value of v of t dt is 
the total distance traveled um, in the first minute because we're going from 0 to 60 seconds which is one minute in the first minute and so that's sort of the first thing that we could say about that um, but then we actually have to approximate that value using a left Riemann sum with the sub intervals indicated by the data so let's get that little explanation out of the way um, just gonna move it over there so I can grab it later if I need it <clears throat> So my left Riemann sum just means basically use rectangles to approximate the area under the curve um, where the height of the rectangle is determined by the left side of the endpoint. So this data, there are four, um, four, four times that data was recorded at 0 seconds, at 10 seconds, at 40 seconds, and at 60 seconds. But that means that I have three intervals from 0 to 10, from 10 to 40, and from 40 to 60. So there's only three intervals here. And that's important for us to recognize that there are only three intervals that we can approximate. So for my first sort of area under the curve, since I'm using a left endpoint, I use 2.0 as sort of the height of my rectangle, and then 10 as the width because that's the length because it's 10 seconds. Um, so I'm going, I'm, a, I'm treating this as if I'm going a constant 2 meters per second for that whole entire sec 10 second interval. Then I add on the next interval which is from 10 to 40 and so that's a length of 30 and I'm gonna again since I'm using the left endpoint I'm gonna imagine that I'm going 2.3, a constant 2.3 meters per second for that entire 30 second interval. And then the last of my three intervals, I'm going to imagine that I'm going 2.5 meters per second for the entire 20 second interval from 40 seconds to 60 seconds. And so I multiply all this out, so this is going to be 20 plus 69 plus 50, which is equal to 139, and the units on that are just meters, and the units should be meters because we're approximating, like we said before, the distance traveled. And we can also see that the units should be meters because when I take this 2.0, it's 2.0 meters per second times 10 meter, or I'm sorry, times 10 seconds because the length of the interval is in seconds. So I'm going 2.0 meters per second for 10 seconds. That's 20 meters in the first interval. 2.3 meters per second for 30 seconds is 69 meters for the third or for the second interval. And then 2.5 meters per second for 20 seconds is 50 meters for the third interval, or a total of 139 meters. Notice, of course, that we did not use 4.6 at all. The reason that we did not use the 4.6 is because this 4.6 I don't know how long I would have gone 4.6 meters per second for because there's no time after that my my chart stops at 60 and also they only asked me to go 260 here so we're going we're assuming we're going 2.0 meters per second for the first 10 seconds 2.3 meters per second for the next 30 seconds and then 2.5 meters per second for the next 20 seconds which is the entire 60 second interval um, and we used again the 2.0, the 2.3, and the 2.5 because we were using the left side of each interval because they said use a left Riemann sum okay um, so that's how we would do parts A and B uh, I'm going to make a separate video for part C and D uh, to make sure I fit the YouTube time allotment. So that's parts A and B of question number 5 from the AP Calculus AB 
Form B examination from 2011.